from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Urban Outlook. Hello and welcome to Urban Outlook. I'm April Leeton. Thank you so much for being with us today. The killing of nine people at the Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina is among a long list of violent attacks targeting predominantly black churches through the years. Some of these attacks didn't just happen in the South, but many of them did. Think back at a number of the church burnings through the years in places like Mississippi and Louisiana, Massachusetts, he, even here in Tennessee. Birmingham, Alabama was the focus in 1963, as you know, when a bomb was placed at the 16th Street Church, killing four little girls and injuring many of the members there. Black churches have been and continue to be powerhouses in black communities. They've produced many a great leader. They've served as symbols of hope. But to discuss the role of the church, the black church in our society, and perhaps even help us bring some clarity to the reasons behind some of the senseless acts that we've been seeing historically and now again today, I welcome Vanderbilt sociologist, Dr. Sandra Barnes. She's a professor of human and organizational development at Peabody College there at Vanderbilt and also a professor of sociology and religion at Vanderbilt Divinity School. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Barnes. Thanks for inviting me. So, so as you know, we're, we talk about all of the latest tragedies. We had the, the incident that happened in Charleston not long ago, but then since then, there have been a number of church burnings exactly. that have happened. What do you think is going on here? Much of my research focuses on the, the black church across time. And so we, we know there's a large body of literature that describes its unique place in the black community and the larger society. So we're talking about an institution, an organism, if you will, that has spiritual implications as well as secular implications. Yeah. And so if we think about the intrinsic spiritual value of what it means to, to be val validated by God to do great things no matter what's going on in the larger society, mm -hmm. and then you combine that with employment programs and political programs and programs for the elderly. You have this fusion of, again, that which is spiritual and that which is secular that makes the church very, very important in the black community. And so we see this across time. And for, for some, it's empowering. And for others, it's problematic. A force to be reckoned with. Exactly. But why is it problematic for those who don't see the positive that comes out of our churches? This goes back to a conversation, a sobering conversation that I often have dealing with this notion of entitlement. And I talk about it a lot because it's so critical in the sense that for the black church and for black Christians who understand or who have this belief that God has validated them, then they are they feel entitled to the spiritual benefits as well as the non spiritual benefits that are available on earth. They feel that God has validated them and so they're going to be working toward those things. And so you have that sense of entitlement coming from the kind of a divine place. But then you also have the reality in our larger society where people who people who people may feel as if um, let's say segments of the white population mm -hmm. may feel as if they are entitled to the the best jobs. They're entitled to the, be the best kinds of homes. They're entitled to those things that historically have been um, at their disposal and so now you have the persons who are coming from a, a not so spiritual place feeling as if they're entitled who are now being confronted with people coming from a place of love, coming from a place of godly validation. Yeah. And so here you have a sense of the, the conflict that we see emerging across time. It, it wanes sometimes and then it bubbles up again and I contend that it will continue to bubble up until we make some, some serious changes at an individual level, but also at a macro level or at a systemic level. So, so is it a racial conflict or is it a socioeconomic conflict? Because uh, the man charged with the killings, uh, Dylan Roof uh, in Charleston, uh, has been linked to white supremacy. Exactly. Uh, the officials have said that the crime was racially motive. Some of his comments sort of indicate that that may have been the case. Exactly. Um, but is the conflict that we're seeing where, where, as you say, in the black church, 
which we we feel that we have come through time and we are entitled to things and then those other groups who also may see that they're entitled to those mm -hmm. same things mm -hmm. more so than maybe others mm -hmm. uh, it, that could be a racial sort of conversation mm -hmm. but it could also be a conversation of conflict across different cultures and across uh, different economic uh, means yes you, you're correct it's a, a variety of different dynamics but race and racism is embedded in the problem and so we have this intersection between race and class and gender and yeah. sexual orientation all of these ways in which people can be different and and for us in terms of, of those who study the, the black church we see the connection to race of course and we see the the connection to the class piece in terms of the kinds of programs the kinds of processes that are often in place in black churches to economically uplift persons and so I want to kind of to to make sure I clarify to mm -hmm. the the audience in terms of this notion of entitlement in terms of the black community and the black church by that I'm not referring to some expectation that people will get that black people should get something without working what I'm talking about is a powerful a potentially powerful belief system that suggests that no matter what has happened whether we're talking about slavery or the Jim Crow South that people that black people who embrace this notion of Christianity believe that God or the deity has sanctioned them or blessed them it blessed them favored them mm -hmm. in a way that is that goes against whatever the negative stereotypes and depictions of them are in society and so it's a different way of thinking about entitlement we're talking about an expectation that one has the potential to do great things and to be great because the the because God has not is not a respecter of persons got you but and while that expectation is in the church it also is in many homes I mean exactly. some would say most families would want their children to do better than they exactly. did right exactly. so when you break it down to simplicity mm -hmm. it's just not about entitlement but it's also just about the belief that you should do your best right. and be the greatest person that you are exactly. so I get where you're going there exactly. um, but, but talk a little, a little bit about you know sort of uh, what things have happened in time with our church Exactly. Uh, as we said, uh, since the slayings in, in Charleston, uh, we have seen a number of, of church burnings exactly. since June 17th, a rash of them, in fact. Federal officials are investigating them right now. Uh, some of them have already been ruled arson. arson exactly. uh, Jan June 21st in Knoxville, Tennessee, College Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church was burned. Uh, they don't know whether that one's arson yet or not. June 23rd, uh, God's Power Church of Christ in Macon, Georgia. T June 24th, arson destroyed Briar Creek Road Church. That one in Charlotte, North North Carolina. Uh, some say this may not be a coincidence. Uh, they say that it may be history repeating itself. Yes. What do you think? Well, we know there's a long history yeah. of not only disenfranchisement, but violence in terms of the black community and the black church because of its, its central nature is often seen as this is where you go. This is where, yeah. of course, you're going to have a large group of black people. You're going to have, this is where the information is. This is where you're going to have this, a message of hope, a message of healing, I, I always say. And so if we think about even during slavery, the, the, the notion of the invisible institution, where before the church had walls, slaves would go against the slave masters and go into the the, the woods if you will mm -hmm. and and worship and so even then you had you had Afri people of African descent kind of pushing back um, even even though many of them could be killed pushing back and then over time with the organized churches you're talking about raids the the dynamics that have happened to Emmanuel AME in, in Charleston are just kind of a microcosm yeah. of what's taking place across time in terms of raiding black churches burning black churches down um, going into black churches in a violent fashion accusing um, accusing black persons of going against the government or in s somehow being involved in conspiracies this there's a long history a long sad history of that in the united states and partly as i said before it's about the centrality of the black church but it's also about the feeling a sense of kind of a sense of a fear in terms of what the black mm -hmm. church has represented what the black church continues to represent um, some of the more recent um, i think the last 
reports I reviewed, 2012 Pew report, reports, mm -hmm. show that in terms of the importance of the black of the church, importance of prayer, importance of church participation, when we compare rates between blacks and whites in the United States, we're talking about a 20 percent point difference in terms of the role that the church and church involvement plays in the black in the black community. So even though we, we live in a much more secularized world and we see Christianity waning among many whites, especially white young white evangelicals, we haven't seen that dramatic downturn in the black community. And so you have this consistency in terms of black church involvement, you have consistency in terms of programmatic efforts. And despite this parallel, um, parallel consistency of, of negativity on the part of mm. people who, white people who may fear what that means, what that means symbolically, what yeah. that means spiritually, and what that means in a very practical way. And then that makes me wonder, should we fear then? Because you never want to stop the movement, the positive movement forward. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Uh, but if there's a fear of the potential that we have because mm -hmm. of who we are mm -hmm. and the churches we attend and the messages that we receive right. to be better, uh, then what does that mean we have to do to protect ourselves now? Let's exactly. take a quick break and then I want to touch on that just a little bit. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us.